in a case i am not mentioning it because it is bound to be considered by the high court for confirmation and then perhaps may travel to the supreme court some celebrated some did not celebrate some condemned the judiciary in giving the verdict after a gap of 10 months and this condemnation is widely spread throughout the country of the entire judicial system today one or two percent cases in the courts which are or maybe five percent which are older by 10 years are cited as not examples justification for attributing every ill to the judiciary what mr divan just mentioned another wrong which we committed we committed was that we thought that we have three organs of the state i need not detail them the courts created fourth organ the press the media but each one of us has forgotten the most important component of the constitution that is the people common man in the country is on the margin he has been sidelined all through i am sure all those sitting who have crossed the 50 years age must have attended the functions of 15th august and 26th of january in the stadiums and felt elated because they were part of the freedom movement in some measure to the next generation we did not pass anything and therefore it has become a governmental function this missing of the common men this missing of the we the people of india it is one of the worst thing which has happened after independence and if rule of law has to acquire some meaning then we must instill a confidence in the common men that you are an integral part of this great democracy till that happens the rule of law will be an illusion rule of law will be discussed debated in the court rooms parliament and some sections of the bureaucracy in the long march of mankind from cave to the existing world today a central role has always been played by the idea of law the idea that order is necessary and chaos is inimical to just and stable existence every society whether large or small powerful or weak has created for itself a framework of principles of development permissible and forbidden acts have been spelled out within the conscience of the community progress with its explicable leaps and bounds has always been based upon dedication of a group of men women and nations as they combine to pursue commonly accepted goals law is the element that binds the member of community together in their adherence to recognized values and standards international law is the body of rules which various countries recognizes binding upon them in their mutual relations and which provides the basis for peace and stability among nations with the aim to protect and ensure the well-being of the human kind professor dicey defined the rule of law in three ways in the first place he said the rule of law meant absence of arbitrary power on the part of the government next it meant that no man is above law and every man whatever be his rank or condition 
is subject to the ordinary law of the realm and amenable to the jurisdiction of the ordinary tribunals. That is, equality before law and equal subjection of all the clauses of ordinary law of the land administered by the ordinary law courts. The third meaning given by Dicey is that the law of the constitution is not the source but the consequence of rights of individuals as defined and enforced by the courts. The last meaning is out of place in India. Sir Ivory Jennings in his book, The Law and the Constitution critically examined the three meanings of the rule of law given by Dicey. He commented that Dicey was imagining a constitution dominated by the doctrine of laissez-faire. According to Jennings, the truth is that the rule of law is apt to be rather an unruly horse. It implies many notions which are imprecise. A state regulated by law, law and order, and separation of power, since the fusion of power in one authority is dictatorship or absolutism. He adds, it contains also the notion of equality, a notion whose scope, power as is imprecise, as the notion of rule of law itself, it assumes that among equals, the law should be equal and should be equally administered, that like should be treated alike. In India, in Indra Nehru Gandhi versus Radna and K.K. Matthew J., considered the concept of rule of law as part of basic structure of the constitution and observed, I quote, if rule of law is to be the basic structure of the constitution, one must find a specific provision in the constitution embodying the constituent element of the concept. I cannot conceive of rule of law as a twinkling star up above the constitution. To be basic structure, it must be a terrestrial concept having its habitat within the four corners of the constitution. The provisions of the constitution were enacted with a view to ensure the rule of law. Even if I assume that the rule of law is basic structure, it seems to me that meaning and the constituent elements of the concept must be gathered from the enacting provisions of the constitution. The equality aspect of the rule of law and of democratic republicanism is provided in Article 14. Globalization has not only increased the importance of international law, but also of the complexity of international legal issues. It's a multi-dimensional process of economic, political, cultural, and ideological change. Globalization is sometimes thought of as a process of uniformization. It has now become catchphrase which can be used to describe everything that is happening in the world today. We are enamored of this word for the last 25 years. The buzzword is that the financial world is globalization with its Orwellian double speak semantics. This would be the chameleonic capacity, capability to be a friend and enemy at the same time, which is the latest game of corporates. It is the corporate cannibal trying to occupy the economic space of the third world, a deja vu of the old East India Company, but with exponential and potential aided and abetted by fifth communist enterprises. The world is one. It is united by market-hungry multinational corporations of first world monopolizing the resources of the third world with the single objective of maximum profits and dismantling national private pygmies and public sector industries. This is the new world order with its cosmetic mantra of globalization, liberalization and privatization. I would like to mention one thing. The courts are grappling with the problem of urbanization, total chaos of town planning of urban areas. Cities like Bombay, Bombay is the leader, Delhi is the sister. 
in slums. Before I tell about more about Delhi and Bombay, I tell my experience. I lived in Chandigarh, the city beautiful, for 10 years, 10 months. La Cabouzier, the great French architect, designed the city. Of course, there were two other architects who had done it prior to La Cabouzier. Most of the people don't know it. From 50 to 52, they, they did it. La Cabouzier came in 1952. That poor French architect did not know that India is India, not France. And therefore, he did not make a provision for the poor people at all. But we are poor. So lot many poor settled in one of the sectors of Chandigarh that is called sector 25. Now the governments of the day do not have the capacity and will obviously to evict them and there is no occasion to evict them. No facilities, no amenities are provided. That is the condition of all slums in the country. Anybody passing by that particular sector would put a handkerchief on his nose as if humans are not living there. And so is the condition of the slums in Bombay and Delhi, Kanpur and Ahmedabad, everywhere in the country. We talk of, in the era of globalization, another aspect on which some of the ministers has commented, have commented about court's interdiction in the matters of land acquisition. The gentlemen forget that when you acquire the land of an agriculturist, first thing which you do is make the landowner a landless poor, and what a wonderful suggestion by the industrialist. He says, I would provide employment to one person. The master becomes servant at the mercy of the power broker. We have destroyed our cottage industries in the villages across the country. The natural result was people migrated, migrated to the cities. The best example is Delhi, place Gurgaon, and nearby areas. All around Gurgaon, the land has been acquired in the name of creating special economic zones, transferred, of course, for urban purposes thereafter, urbanization. What do these people do? What do the next generation do? Because these agriculturists do not know anything except agriculture. They have glamour before them, the glamour of Delhi. And therefore, they travel to Delhi with the hope that they will get some source of employment, some source of earning. And ultimately, they end up in living slums. This is the best benefit of globalization which we have got in our country. The process of globalization could be more accurately stated to be creation of the World Trade Organization on January 1, 1995. If 1991 was about ending state monopolies, 1995 was about lowering the barrier of competition from the world outside. This short interval has meant that in popular discourse, globalization often confused with privatization in a market economy. In this way, the government of India opened floodgates for the entry of transnational corporations to operate in India with better facilities than ever. Memories of Bhopal gas tragedy were still fresh in the minds of Indians, so a need was felt by the lawmakers to strengthen the existing rules, regulations and laws of the land to provide a level playing field while protecting national interests. I don't know how many of the audience are aware that we are still dealing, the courts are still grappling with Bhopal gas tragedy related cases. After 28 years, still the question of management of the waste and removal of the waste from the Gopal is still being debated up to the apex court in the country. What a tragedy. The term globalization of laws refers to the degree to which whole world lives under a single set of legal rules. 
such a single set of rules might be imposed by an international body adopted by global consensus or arrived at the parallel development in all parts of the globe. In today's world of increasing international trade and international interdependence, the need for transnational law has increased manifold. Since more and more countries open their economy, either partially or completely, there is growing need to recognize and work towards a uniform system of law. This is the demand. In India, various new legislations have been enacted in the emerging field of laws to confront globalization. I, there are several laws like intellectual property law, the Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers' Rights Act, Biological Diversities Act, Trademarks Act, Protection of Geographical Indications Act, IT Act, Competition Law, Foreign Exchange Management Act, then TRI, etc. In today's world of interdependence and international commerce, there is increasing importance growth of harmonization of international commercial law and there is a tentative movement towards the formulation of transnational commercial law through contracts. In the global context, because of the economic position of the United States and some of the countries of Europe, these countries substantially influence the process of globalization of law. The obvious reason being that they contribute substantially to foreign investment in other parts of the world and have a strong role to play in international trade. Other than American economic power, another reason for this is the receptive, receptivity of common law to contract and other commercial laws. It is widely believed in Europe and European community legal business flows to London because English lawyers are more adept than civil law lawyers as at legal innovation to facilitate new and evolving transnational business relationship. For whatever reasons, it is now possible to argue that American commercial law has become a kind of global just commune incorporated explicitly or implicitly into transnational contracts and beginning to be incorporated to the case law and even the statutes of many nations. The constitutional rights movement is one of the aspects of global movement, which is the base on the distrust of concentration of power. The individual is seen as needing protection from all the larger forces which threaten to crush him, not simply from governmental, not simply threatened from the government. Law is seen as one instrument for such protection. This is speaking of globalization. Thus, in speaking of globalization, we move from the real of con realm of constitutional law to the realm of law of torts, product standards, consumer protection, and occupational health and safety. In the security market, there has been a rapid innovation for better investor protection such as a ban on insider trading and committee reports on corporate governance. There has been enormous global flood of product standards and other consumer protection law. But not only are the developments much faster in some nations than in others, but also the substantive standard and the rules adopted by them also vary widely. Albert Einstein has written, human, not savage, it must fulfill. The existence and validity of human rights are not written in the stars. Those ideas and convictions which resulted from historical experience, from the craving for beauty and harmony, have been readily accepted in theory by men and at all times, have been trampled upon by same people under the pressure of their animal instinct. A large part of history therefore replete with the struggle for those human rights, an eternal struggle in which a final victory can never be won. But go tired is the struggle would mean ruin of the society. The weaker sanctions of the community are a, spe a special concern and commitment of the constitution. Thus we have as the paramount law 
a procession of inviolable imperatives of human rights. Neither the members of parliament nor the cabinets in the country can undo the basic structure and feature of the constitution as outlined above. It is necessary to emphasize the obvious instead of inve investigating into abstract. Adopting this stance, if we examine the gate along with other imperial across light trips like trips, trims, we may arguably hold that all present maneuvers and legislative gambits under the compulsion from WTO are contra constitutional gift. Such a coup on the constitution has to be rejected and the highest court in the land must have the functional clarity, diamond hard integrity and homogeneous illumination to tell other instrumentalities of the constitution about the get as an illegal locomotive violation of the supreme law. Justice Krishna here talks about the omnibus development of trade trap, debt trap, death trap, jumbo project traps, job jettison trap, and fund bank traps cumulatively lend in the country in get atrophic trap and WTO command trap, globalized market capture and third world victimology are the fifth act of the tragedy unless India fights back. Globalization in the sense of making a global market free of all the grab with no barriers for import, no subsidies for negative agriculture or industry, no Swadeshi, no self-reliance cult, nor impediments to capture economic space or consequence of production process and patent monopolies, thus universal visa for MNCs, without development discrimination, fatty nationalism, and excess inhibition in the glory of the new world order, according to its advocates. Here, we have to test on the touchstone of constitution the consequences of globalization and liberalization, promotive of privatization, the national plans of India have a constitutional dimension with a special emphasis on poverty alleviation and free services in the area of health and food. The basic directives of part three and four, nor the balance sheet and individuals of MNCs mind the state, labor intensive undertakings, production within India, obedience to safety laws and industrial relations jurisprudence are relevant. But globalization is the market drive, not man-oriented. So the market-oriented players and the development-focused undertakings will not attract global adventurists. Growth with justice has to no place in the scheme of the market grab, grab operators. The multiplication of legal orders is characteristic of what one could call an age of globalization.